So now ready to finally program our player. Now it doesn't matter if you use a third person or a first person camera, programming still applies the same. So first thing we need to do is we're going to get rid of these code comments at the start. We're going to set up some variables. So the first variable we're going to set up is speed. So how fast can the player go? We're going to set this up as a variable so we can quickly tweak this and change this for our game. Second thing is we're going to set up a velocity vector. So velocity allows us to see how fast our player is going and in what direction. So this is something that's really, really powerful that we can use to work out if the player is moving and in what direction. Next, we need to set up some functions. So I'm just going to get rid of these code comments and set up three functions. So first one's a very special function, and it's the physics processor delta. This runs every single tick. So next, we're going to set up a new one, and it's going to be called function. And this one we're going to be called get input vector. Now this one obviously doesn't pop up because this is something that we're creating ourselves. So we've got that one there. And our final function we're going to create, making sure again that we're not indenting when we write our functions, is function apply movement. So once we work out the movement, we want to apply it. And this is going to take in an input vector as an argument. So we must supply that. So now we've got that set up, what we're going to put in each one. We're actually going to start with the input vector function. And we're going to start off making sure we're indented by one. Var input vector. Equals vector three. Dot zero. And what we're saying is at the start of. Let's move that window out of the way a little bit so you can see a bit more code. What we're doing is every time we declare this function, we're going to actually change our vector back to zero. So the player is starting by not moving, and then we'll work out how much they're moving by. First, we're going to work out the input vector going in the x direction. So input vector dot x equals input dot get action. Strength, so it's going to get the strength of the key, so how much we're pressing it by, and then inside the brackets, we set up our move right that we set up as our key bindings. We're then going to minus this from our input action get strength move left. So we can just take this whole line of code now. So input action dot get strength, and a click, and we're going to get the left value of that. like so. So this is what that line should look like. So input vector x equals input dot get action strength move right minus input action strength move left. Now what's really nice about this now is that we can copy and paste this whole line. And we're going to do the same for our z direction. So first, make sure it's not indented any more than the first line. Get input value Z. Remember, Y is our up and down. And then instead of move right, we're going to change this to move back. And instead of move left, we can change this to move forward. So we've got that set up. Now on the next line, we can now return that value. So return input vector dot, and then we're going to normalize it. Now what normalize does is if you're holding both up and right at the same time and you're moving on the diagonal, it stops you getting much faster by moving diagonal. So it resets that speed and caps that a little bit. So that's the first bit done. So now we need to apply this. So when we apply this, we're just going to do velocity dot x equals input vector dot x times speed. So we're working out how fast we're going in the x direction, and we're multiplying that by a speed of 10. So if we adjust this, it will just how fast we're going. Second thing we're going to do, copy and paste this line, 
and we're going to apply the same to z but this time we're also looking on the input vector of z so that's all set up so finally we can go back to our physics process that runs every tick and what we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple of things so first thing we're going to say input vector equals and then we're going to run this get input vector function that we've just set up so we're saying the current value of input vector is whatever we got with this function here next line what we're going to do is we're actually going to apply the movement function and this requires an argument and the argument we're giving it is our input vector we just got back from our function that tells us how much uh, speed will go in each direction depending on the key presses and then finally once we've got that I've got one more function to run and we're going to do velocity equals and we're using a function called move and slide now what move and slide does is it moves our character and we're going to move it by a velocity so velocity is something that we've come back from using all these different um, functions that we've set up and then vector free, oh, vector free dot, and then up, saying that gravity is upward. Now, gravity shouldn't be working at the moment. We'll have to set it up a little bit later, but we're just setting that up ready for later. So finally, we want to save all this. So save scene. We can go back to level one, and we can hit the play button. And obviously a bit of an error here. I forgot to put our brackets after this one. So that's not work. So we'll just try again. So I'm going to go back to level one. I'm going to refresh it and load it again. And now we've got our character. And with W, S, and D, we can move around like so. And you'll see that we're floating at the moment. Now, if I try and move backwards, it's not working. So I just need to do a quick fix on that one. And what I've noticed is actually I've called it move back and not move backwards so it's really important whatever you name your functions at the start so I go to project project settings input map move backwards with an s that I need to make sure I'm doing that the same in our code to make the chart works so we'll run this once more and now we should be able to move up down left and right Next video, we'll focus on adding some gravity to this as well.